This video is about rational functions and their graphs. Recall that a rational function is a function that can be written as a ratio or quotient of two polynomials. Here's an example. The simpler function f of x equals 1 over x is also considered a rational function. You can think of 1 and x as very simple polynomials. The graph of this rational function is shown here. This graph looks different from the graph of a polynomial. For one thing, its end behavior is different. The end behavior of a function is the way the graph looks when x goes through really large positive or really large negative numbers. We've seen that the end behavior of a polynomial always looks like one of these cases. That is, y marches off to infinity or maybe negative infinity as x gets really big or really negative. But this rational function has a different type of end behavior. Notice as x gets really big, the y values are leveling off at about a y value of 3. And similarly, as x values get really negative, our graph is leveling off near the line y equals 3. I'll draw that line y equals 3 on my graph. That line is called a horizontal asymptote. A horizontal asymptote is a horizontal line that our graph gets closer and closer to as x goes to infinity or as x goes to negative infinity, or both. There's something else that's different about this graph from a polynomial graph. Look at what happens as x gets close to negative 5. As we approach negative 5 with x values on the right, our y values are going down towards negative infinity. And as we approach the x value of negative 5 from the left, our y values are going up towards positive infinity. We say that this graph has a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 5. A vertical asymptote is a vertical line that the graph gets closer and closer to. Finally, there's something really weird going on at x equals 2. There's a little open circle there, like the value at x equals 2 is dug out. That's called a hole. A hole is a place along the curve of the graph where the function doesn't exist. Now that we've identified some of the features of our rational function's graph, I want to look back at the equation and see how we could have predicted those features just by looking at the equation. To find horizontal asymptotes, we need to look at what our function is doing when x goes through really big positive or really big negative numbers. Looking at our equation for our function, the numerator is going to be dominated by the 3x squared term when x is really big, right? Because 3 times x squared is going to be absolutely enormous compared to this negative 12 if x is a big positive or negative number. In the denominator, the denominator will be dominated by the x squared term again. If x is a really big positive or negative number, like a million, a million squared will be much, much bigger than 3 times a million, or negative 10. For that reason, to find the end behavior, or the horizontal asymptote, for our function, we just need to look at the term on the numerator and the term on the denominator that have the highest exponent. Those are the ones that dominate the expression in size. So as x gets really big, our function's y values are going to be approximately 3x squared over x squared, which is 3. That's why we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3. Now our vertical asymptotes, those tend to occur where our denominator of our function is 0. That's because the function doesn't exist when our denominator is 0, and when we get close to that place where our denominator is 0, we're going to be dividing by tiny, tiny numbers, which will make our y values really big in magnitude. So to check where our denominator is 0, let's factor our function. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and factor the numerator and the denominator. So the numerator factors, let's see, pull out the 3, I get x squared minus 4. Factoring the denominator, that factors into x plus 5 times x minus 2. I can factor a little, the numerator a little further. That's 3 times x minus 2 times x plus 2 over x plus 5, x minus 2. Now, when x is equal to negative 5, my denominator will be 0, but my numerator will not be 0. That's what gives me the vertical asymptote at x equals negative 5. 
Notice that when x equals 2, the denominator is 0, but the numerator is also 0. In fact, if I canceled the x minus 2 factor from the numerator and denominator, I get a simplified form for my function that agrees with my original function as long as x is not equal to 2. That's because when x equals 2, this simplified function exists, but the original function does not. It's 0 over 0. It's undefined. But for every other x value, including x values near x equals 2, our original function is just the same as this function. And that's why our function only has a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 5, not 1 at x equals 2, because the x minus 2 factor is no longer in the function after simplifying. It does have a hole at x equals 2, because the original function is not defined there, even though the simplified version is. If we want to find the y value of our hole, we can just plug in x equals 2 into our simplified version of our function. That gives a y value of 3 times 2 plus 2 over 2 plus 7, or 12 ninths, which simplifies to 4 thirds. So our whole is at 2 4 thirds. Now that we've been through one example in detail, let's summarize our findings. We find the vertical asymptotes and the holes by looking where the denominator is 0. The holes happen where the denominator and numerator are both 0 and those factors cancel out. The vertical asymptotes are all other x values where the denominator is 0. We find the horizontal asymptotes by considering the highest power term on the numerator and the denominator. I'll explain this process in more detail in three examples. In the first example, if we circle the highest power terms, that simplifies to 5x over 3x squared, which is 5 over 3x. As x gets really big, the denominator is going to be huge. So I'm going to be dividing 5 by a huger and huger number. That's going to be going very close to 0. And therefore, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. In the second example, the highest power terms, 2x cubed over 3x cubed, simplify it to 2 thirds. So as x gets really big, we're going to be heading towards 2 thirds, and we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2 thirds. In the third example, the highest power terms, x squared over 2x, simplifies to x over 2. As x gets really big, x over 2 is getting really big. And therefore, we don't have a horizontal asymptote at all. This is going to infinity when x gets through, goes through big positive numbers, and it's going to negative infinity when x goes through big negative numbers. So in this case, the end behavior is kind of like that of a polynomial, and there's no horizontal asymptote. In general, when the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator, we're in this first case where the denominator gets really big compared to the numerator, and we go to 0. In the second case, where the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator are equal, things cancel out. And so we get a horizontal asymptote at the y value that's equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients. Finally, in the third case, when the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator, then the numerator is getting really big compared to the denominator, so we end up with no horizontal asymptote. Finally, let's apply all these observations to one more example. Please pause the video and take a moment to find the vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, and holes for this rational function. To find the vertical asymptotes and holes, we need to look at where the denominator is 0. In fact, it's going to be handy to factor both the numerator and the denominator since there, if there are any common factors, we might have a hole instead of a vertical asymptote. The numerator is pretty easy to factor. Let's see, that's 3x times x plus 1. For the denominator, I'll first factor out an x, and then I'll factor some more using a guess and check method. I know that I'll need a 2x and an x to multiply together to the 2x squared, and I'll need a 
a 3 and a minus 1, or else a, a, a minus 3 and a 1. Let's see if that works. If I multiply out 2x minus 1 times x plus 3, that does give me back my 2x squared plus 5x minus 3, so that checks out. Now I notice that I have a common factor of x in both the numerator and the denominator. So that's telling me I'm going to have a whole at x equals 0. In fact, I could rewrite my rational function by canceling out that common factor, and that's equivalent as long as x is not equal to 0. So the y value of my whole is what I get when I plug 0 into my simplified version. That would be 3 times 0 plus 1 over 2 times 0 minus 1 times 0 plus 3, which is 3 over negative 3 or minus 1. So my whole is at 0 minus 1. Now all the remaining places in my denominator that make my denominator 0 will give me vertical asymptotes. So I'll have a vertical asymptote when 2x minus 1 times x plus 3 equals 0, that is when 2x minus 1 is 0 or x plus 3 is 0. In other words, when x is 1 half or x equals negative 3. Finally, to find my horizontal asymptotes, I just need to consider the highest power term in the numerator and the denominator. That simplifies to 3 over 2x, which is bottom heavy, right? When x gets really big, this expression is going to 0. And that means that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So we found the major features of our graph, the whole, the vertical asymptotes, and the horizontal asymptotes. Together, this would give us a framework for what the graph of our function looks like. A horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, vertical asymptotes at x equals 1 half and x equals minus 3, and a hole at the point 0, minus 1. Plotting a few more points, or using a graphing calculator or a graphing program, we can see that our actual function will look something like this. Notice that the x-intercept, when x is negative 1, corresponds to where the numerator of our rational function, or reduced rational function, is equal to 0. That's because a 0 on the numerator that doesn't make the denominator 0 makes the whole function 0 and an x-intercept is where the y-value of the whole function is 0. In this video, we learned how to find horizontal asymptotes of rational functions by looking at the highest power terms. We learned to find the vertical asymptotes and holes by looking at the factored version of the functions. The holes correspond to the x-values that make the numerator and denominator 0, whose corresponding factors cancel. The vertical asymptotes correspond to the x values that make the denominator 0, even after factoring any, any, common, any common factors in the numerator and denominator.